uh, thank you, just doing our job uh, as we see it. And I think, uh, and we all, I think, in Arizona have an obligation to follow state law. It's an astonishing concept, but the, um, the Attorney General will make himself available to the media for a few moments out in the lobby. Comments from the council? No? Mr. Goddard. Hey, pleasure to meet you, sir. How are you doing? Thank you. You know, you once did a uh, public service spot saying about mail fraud, and here in Peoria, I was experiencing a great deal of that, and I even knew who some of the perpetrators were, but I couldn't get it reported to the police here to where they'd take care of it, and I had to take my mailbox down. No kidding. Yeah, and then unfortunately, yeah, and then unfortunately, even though I don't have a mailbox there, I still get my mail manipulated right, right through the Peoria Post Office. You complain to the postal inspectors? Well? Yeah, certified mail, and it's a different document. But I'm so I'm sad that you weren't in there because this Arizona Republic reporter would like to talk to me about the attacks against me and a kidney donor, a girlfriend of mine, by unknown people, uh, six to eight of them coming from all directions. And uh, good old Department of Health Services in Magellan, you know, now there's a stand up $1.5 billion contract that's failing the people in this state. Yes, and I'm ready to talk. Yes, and I'm ready yes, to let you know how the fiduciaries in Arizona that are private actually conduct themselves in a way where they're committing systemic murders. And it happened to my mother. Her name is Virginia May Vivian Carr. And that licensing division down at the Supreme Court has absolutely subverted and skirted what would be an integral investigation. And I've brought all of this to the Through attention the of your office, the, the licensing board at the, uh, the Supreme Court Licensing Division. And we wanted to go and you know listen to their uh, what they said was their investigation and determinations on the complaint sure. against a private judiciary illegally appointed that removes life support and ends human life in this country for profit. And her name is Jane Ann Geisler. And believe me you, while I'm still walking, living and breathing, you're going to know who Jane Ann Geisler is. And you're going to know all about how she absolutely embezzles estates and throws people with her lawyers into mental hospitals that have a financial interest in doing that. Ooh. And that attorney's name is Susanna Goldman. She's moved her practice to Illinois. Now? Oh, yes. This has all been sent up to your office. Yes. Okay. As well as the, the notice of claim I just let them know about. Uh, against the state of Arizona for this attack on me through this contractor Magellan in formerly value options. Sure. Now I'm tired of being called crazy and I'm going to let the reporter in the Arizona Republic know very specifically exactly what happened because there's a woman dead who is a believer in the Baha'i faith which does not permit cremation and there's a fiduciary in this state named Jane Ann Geisler that cremated that body to cover up either malpractice, foul play, or both. And I'm depending on you to find out which it was, if not both. Well, we'll have to sort out who can, who can investigate. Accidental death, no... I represent the Supreme Court. So accidental a, death, sure accidental death, no autopsy. Mm -hmm. That's very it against their religious very beliefs. Sir, I'm having okay. a follow-up on some of your complaints. It's about time. Office, so that's my direct line. Is yeah. there? I apologize. We I'd be happy to publish the calls to the Attorney General's office that we make because you absolutely get put off in this state. People there are either bought or they could care less. And I'll quote President Obama. Public service is a privilege. Yeah. It's a privilege, not a right. However long we are keepers of the public trust, we should never forget that we are here as public servants, and public service is a privilege. And it's a sad, sad state of affairs. And I'm ready to make a big contribution to Arizona, but we got to start at the grassroots level. Okay. And we got to understand that police departments that conduct themselves in retaliatory manners, city attorneys that file petitions to have people committed because they can't face the bar complaint against them, for subverting the law on false arrests that are made by a police department that has a vendetta against a citizen that says, wait a minute, women and children are in danger, and you'll understand how all this fits together. Actually, all you need to do is go to azjusticenews.org. Okay. Yeah. We'll take a look. And you can hear some of my celebrity friends talk about it. Right. Mr. Todd Rundgren has done an interview. Thanks. Yeah, my name is David Carr, K-A-R-R. -R. I'm available for comment, 
and you can reach me at 602-435-0. Uh -huh. Are, are you a resident of and I have, uh, Yes, and I've reported fraud and abuse on behalf of Value Options and Magellan, and I, I, I even see some familiar faces here of people that have attacked me in the night, uh, police officers and so on. I don't know if it's for sure because we're going to have to have the police department determine and identify those individuals. But somebody spending thousands and thousands of dollars in covert manner you know, of operating to try and damage people, and it's enough and it's enough. What's your name? My name is Marsha. I'm a reporter with the Republic. Marsha? Okay. And uh, do you have a card or anything? I don't have a card name yet, but I can give you my card. Would you write it down? Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, it's time we get a little talk in here, because I've reported for eight years now this, the corruption in Arizona. And I uh, would welcome you to do a little story about azjusticenews.org. Very fine. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. The way to make government responsible is to hold it accountable. And the way to make government accountable is to make it transparent so that the American people can know exactly what decisions are being ma made, how they're being made, and whether their interests are being well served. And we all, I think, in Arizona have an obligation to follow state law. It's an astonishing concept, but... Mr. Politano was well aware of these circumstances and took a position in Washington. I do believe moving this up the chain of command with the U.S. Department of Justice on these civil rights violations is in order. I have come to you humbly to report what has happened. Mr. Police Chief Larry Ratcliffe has been contacted directly but doesn't return calls. Okay, well, that is certainly your right, and I wish you luck. Thank you for your time. And would you provide me a response as to who would be responding to my concerns as the rest of the public, Mr. Mayor? Mr. Ratcliffe will talk to you later. And would you do that kindly in writing? I'll think about it. For a long time now, there's been too much secrecy in this city. The old rules said that if there was a defensible argument for not disclosing something to the American people, then it should not be disclosed. That era is now over. Starting today, every agency and department should know that this administration stands on the side not of those who seek to withhold information, but those who seek to make it known. To be sure, issues like personal privacy and national security must be treated with the care they demand. But the mere fact that you have the legal power to keep something secret does not mean you should always use it. To those who cling to power through corruption and deceit and the silencing of dissent, know that you are on the wrong side of history.